I called it four days ago that when Risa Tisa's story blew up on TikTok, I told you everybody was going to go from loving her to hating her in a very short, for, for short time frame. And I was right. I, I told y'all. See, that's why I like watching from a distance. I, I don't say nothing about anything. Because some of the stuff that I be seeing, I, I honestly don't understand. But this whole shenanigans, this whole new scandal with this uh, Risa Tisa young lady. Uh, she was the one that made a whole 50 series on TikTok and shut the app down. It's like every TikTok that she was making, more and more people gravitated to it. More and more people was listening. More and more people was getting engaged with it. A lot of people liked it. A lot of people was like, oh, we love this the young lady. She told a whole story. Like her story should have been made a, a, a Tubi movie or or some reality a producer should have got a hold of this young lady. But instead of just writing the whole story out and try to shop it so that it can be seen she decided to do a whole 50 part story on her life and put it up on tiktok where she knew that on tiktok it was going to blow up so now everybody is like well why she didn't go to youtube right and i i thought the same thing i i said hey that was a good like piece of storytelling right there and it probably would have played well on YouTube, but people know where to go to give the to get the shine. People know where to where to put it at. They know what the algorithm is. And as soon as the algorithm picked up on that first story, she knew right then and there to put the other 49 parts on TikTok. Now that it blew up on TikTok, right? Now it's time to move it over to YouTube. But it's funny that I happen to come across a couple of YouTubers, right? That went and, and got her series and put it up on their YouTube pages. I, I know the fair use protocol. I know it. Copyright is black and white. Copyright specifically says that if you take another person's content and don't do nothing with it, then yes, it is copyright. Yes. It is copyright, but if you use that person content and have some constructive criticism, commentary, or education purposes of repurposing the video, then that's fair use. That's fair use. Myself, Chief Suzette, and other commentators on YouTube, I can name a lot of them. The, the dude from the mediocre uh, tutorials, shout out to him. Shout out to uh, JR Wisdom. Shout out to him. Shout out to Chi Shu Zed. Shout out to him. Shout out to Pink Book Lessons. Shout out to her. There's a lot of us out here that that commentaries on TikTok content or YouTube content or or Facebook content or Instagram content. We give the credit. We say where we get the video from. We say, hey, you can go see the whole video or go subscribe to their channel in our description. So we're not just taking the video and putting it up on our channel and say that it's ours. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna commentary about the video. We're gonna break down the video and put our opinions on it. That's fair use, okay? That is fair use. And a lot of people with this Ressa Tessa or Risa Tisa situation scandal that's going on right now. Everybody from our side of the tracks, which is YouTube, is taking her 50 part content and putting them all together and making a whole YouTube video without the credit. Should Risa Tisa uploaded to YouTube? I think she should. Honestly, I think she should. And I, I do believe she did that, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I'm not mistaken. I I think it is. I think she do have a channel. Well, no, was it was it the TikTok? She did come back on TikTok and said something. Uh, I think she said it was on the TikTok. Yeah, it would play well on YouTube now that it's, it blew up. That's how everybody watched TikTok. Everybody watched TikTok just like that.
they watch parks they always want to come back for part one part two part three part four all the way up to part 50 they'll they'll come back it's like a cliffhanger that's what TikTok does. It's a cliffhanger. You put part one up there and then it just goes off bluntly. And then everybody is like, man, when is the next one? Man, when is the next one? Man, when is the next one? And then when part two comes up, y'all all over there. Part two ends abruptly. Or you got people that just simply say, come back for part two. When? Yeah, I'm, again, I don't watch TikTok like that. I don't watch it like that. I, I I'd rather watch it on YouTube in one fell swoop. I, I I think I think the whole thing is like if you put all the 50 parts together, it probably might be like like an hour over an hour. So me being a truck driver, I can just pop on my YouTube or my YouTube podcast and just listen while I'm going down the way. Now, to my understanding, this is a good listen through though. It really is. But of course. With every good listen through, with every good story, there's always got to be some controversy behind it. I called it four days ago that when Risa Tisa's story blew up on TikTok, I told you everybody was going to go from loving her to hating her in a very short, for, for short time frame. And I was right. I saw at least the past two nights six or seven lives being hosted about her now everyone's trying to say and say well her story is inconsistent you know maybe she was clout chasing a little bit now you know why everybody wants to sit here and hate on her all of a sudden it's because they saw how much money she made from that series if there's one thing about my people that we love to do more than any other race and that is hate on our own when we are being successful or doing something successful and because you can't mimic or replicate or do the same thing that person did the only option you have is to hate when that's literally not the only option you have you can love that person from a distance hell you can shut your mouth and mind your business from a distance but you sit in here pocket watching like i don't know why that's something our people do more than anybody else is pocket watch each other bro Oh my God, she she made eighty six thousand dollars. You know what? Maybe maybe what she was saying wasn't consistent. Oh my God, that white man, jolly good ginger, hosted a live raising her funds to fly out to Paris and London and, and all this crap. You know what? Maybe her story got a little plot holes in it. Let me go ahead and host a live for fifteen hours and complain about it. Y'all move so funny, bro. Like I I I like it's so weird. A black woman literally stopped the whole app. One black woman who didn't even have a hundred thousand followers, bro, literally stopped time and space itself, and that made y'all mad. Why? Yeah, we gotta do better as a as a race, bro. I swear. It's always some controversy behind it. Somebody is gonna look at it a little bit hard. Somebody gonna be like, "Oh, she made all this money." Well, since she made all this money off of it, because at first it was a, it was just a good listen to. It. But now it's all about people pocket watching because they feel that TikTok paid her a lot of money to do the series. And now everybody and their mama got their panties up in the bunch now because now instead of just being there and enjoying the story, now they there, they want to know who the person she was talking about. Uh, they want to know about this. They want to know about that and in depth about this, that and the third. I think the scandal started when she was in a live feed and I think somebody asked her who she was talking about. And she said, with respect to the person that she was talking about, that she ain't want to bring them out. And that's respectful. But of course, TikTok heads, they don't listen. TikTok investigators went out and, and, and did what they do. And they found him. They found the guy. They reached out to the guy. They put his whole name, Instagram, Facebook picture, Facebook, this, that, and the third, all up there. They said, forget you, Risa. We don't, we, we don't care about your privacy or your personal feelings. If you didn't tell the story about it, then, then he wouldn't have been found. It was a story. People do tell stories where the names has been changed to protect the innocent. Not to say that he was innocent and all, but at that point of the storytelling, we didn't care. We were just listening to the story. But TikTok sloops 
that do what TikTok sloops do, they found them. And of course, they want to clout chase off the Risa Tisa bandwagon by bringing in and saying who the guy she was talking about. Now, that person is getting views. The man was found. He probably didn't know nothing about the story. Of course, he went, watched the story, and now he got his side of the story, which is always true. There's always two sides of the story. I get it. I get it. But Risa didn't plan for the other side of the story to be said. She only planned for her side of the story, and that was it. Come on, tell a story, make it into a series. And of course, people always say, well, I didn't think that video was going to get blown up. You put it on TikTok. It was an interesting story. What do you think was going to happen? So here's the guy. I, I don't know his name offhand, but he made a couple of TikToks or looked like Instagrams. And he came on and said what he said about it's a story. And hey, tell the truth. It's a story. It, it's a story is one version of the story. We never know where the truth lies when it comes to telling the story. But here it is. He tells his side. And now everybody is like, oh, man, well, well, she was she came on here for clout chasing. She came on here for views. Why? Why else would I tell a story? Why else would I come on TikTok? Why else would I do that? All you guys do it. It's, it's OK for you to do it, but not OK for me to do it. Now, everybody, instead of enjoying the story now they want to pry into her private life now how much money she's making off this story uh, uh where she live at uh how, how come she living lavish so what who cares just be there for the story man she did an intriguing story that shut down the internet bro that shut down tiktok it went outside to instagram to Facebook because it's being talked about in the Facebook groups. Now it's over here to us on our side of the tracks because a couple of YouTube channels put it all together and uploaded it on their channel for YouTube revenue. If Tisa have uploaded to her channel, if she do have a channel on YouTube, God bless her for it. Because now being that it blew up on TikTok, Ain't no telling what it's going to do for her YouTube, right? But everybody know why she put it up on TikTok in the first place. And for you people that don't know why she did it on TikTok in the first place is because the algorithm, the algorithm, you will build off of TikTok much, much, much faster than you would on YouTube. Shout out to Risa Tisa. A lot of people that's complaining about it, y'all shouldn't really have anything to say about it. She didn't even have that many followers, bro. And she did something that only few did. Only a few can break the internet. And she broke TikTok and the internet. So shout out to Risa Tisa. I hope for her the best. Hope for her success. And yeah, everybody else, just enjoy the, just enjoy the story, man. Uh, in too deep like Omar Make me wanna track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol Now your nosy ass mama wanna get involved When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic She need an Emmy, bitch so dramatic Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged Fucking up my homes, look Patrick You swift to jump shift like a chief Been crying on my line like Therese But it ain't all you, it's me Blame it on the things I went through